how's it going everyone? My name is Lenny and I'm the Director of Integrated Pest Management here at MFNY. And today you're gonna hang out with me and we're gonna talk a little bit about the war on bugs or that's what I like to call it at least, Integrated Pest Management. It's actually one of the least dangerous ways of controlling any of the pests we have here on our cannabis plants at MFNY. One, because out in nature, there are no pesticides. There's no you know, person going around picking every bug off every plant. Natural predators are really the key to the success and the health of our plants here. We keep their populations kind of in check just by releasing certain number of predators for the amount of prey or pests that we have present in the greenhouse and choosing which ones we want to release to suit our needs. Say we would have aphids. A couple grows ago, we actually had a bunch of aphids in one of our greenhouses, Greenhouse 4. And in order to control that, I used ladybugs. And I released about 72,000 ladybugs inside a greenhouse that had about 7,000 plants inside of it. We're talking about almost 10 ladybugs per plant. And with that, we were actually able to control the aphid population without having to spray anything on the plants or actually physically harm the plants in any way. Well, easy isn't always the best way of doing something. I mean, cheap tattoos aren't good and good tattoos aren't cheap. Same kind of goes for IPM. You don't really want to go for the easiest method, especially when you're creating a product for people that is going to be ingested, it's going to be inhaled, things like that. We at MFNY really stand by, we want to do things as naturally as possible to get you the plant and the product in its purest form. If we were to be using chemicals and pesticides to spray through this greenhouse, we would have to be on top of that schedule way more. And by using invertebrates, we're not stressing those plants out. By using bugs, not invertebrates, <laughs> same thing. We're not stressing our plants out and we're allowing them to go through their natural life cycle with invertebrates and bugs that are natural to their growth. Ladybugs, praying mantises. We'll use predatory mites as well to control the smaller pests that we see inside the greenhouses. And in the end, it's almost like we have our own army working for us instead of just trying to gas everything. We have our own little on the ground army working with us. Good for the plant in a specific way as in they keep them healthy. We have beetles that peruse through our plants here eating any aphids and they'll also actually breed on our plants and uh, place their eggs and their larvae, the ladybug larvae or the babies, will come out and they're more voracious of a predator than their parents are. I'm actually more excited when I see baby ladybugs because that just means one, the ecosystem is perfect for our beetles that they're actually breeding and two, that's when I know we have every, like all life stages of any pest covered because when the larvae come out the babies come out they're quite small they're gonna feed on the smaller pests and as they grow they'll eat larger and larger pests and then at the top of the food chain we have our praying mantises and they're kind of like the special ops team they will be released by their egg sacs and I actually have a couple of those with me today and these here are actually collected from MFNY on the property we have a lot of tall grasses and on those grasses our uh, the praying mantises will actually lay their egg sacs or uthikas and if you look closely on the top of this one, you could actually see there is a baby praying mantis sitting on the top of it. Now this one didn't come out of this egg sac. I brought this one out from another one that's been incubating for a while. Those are still emerging. And this one was actually ready to come out because its color changed from light green to dark brown, meaning that it's hardened and it's ready to get its first meal. On these plants, we could be talking about anything from an aphid to a lacewing to a thrip or even flies and gnats of that sort. Basically anything that would come to the plant that is small enough for the praying mantis to catch, it will catch any. They do not fly. The males will fly once they get to adulthood, but we're talking about a bug that'll be about this big then, at that point when they're adults. And by that time, a lot of our mantids will make their way out of the greenhouse and back into nature, where they will repopulate the property for more in the future. And I've separated the property into three different sections, and two of those, there'll be two years between each of them going out and finding the uthikas or egg sacs. That way there's plenty of time for any of the mantises to rebuild their population and we're not taking everything out of the environment. We're hardly taking anything. Another thing a lot of people don't know is that the praying mantises that we all see out in our yards and our gardens are the Chinese mantis. They're not native to the United States. Our native mantis is actually the Carolina mantis, but those big green ones you always see walking around are Chinese mantises and they're actually naturalized. So they are beneficial to the environment, but they are not a protected species. So I, put on, I put on my work vest and my MFOI hat. We're also dealing with things like mold, mildew, and fungus here with our plants as well, because our plants like to grow in 
an almost tropical environment. And inside all of these greenhouses, we're gonna create as close to a natural environment for these plants as possible. And that includes relatively warm temperature and a relatively high humidity. And those are both very conducive to growing funguses, molds, and mildew. But the key is ventilation. That's how we're able to keep our plants very healthy is by providing them with the fresh air from the outside that comes through and comes over the plants and then leaves through the back out of our ventilator doors. So inside the greenhouse, it's a little bit easier to control the environment. We have exhaust fans in the back that'll open up to lower the temperature. We have vents in the front that will open up to let fresh air in. There's dehumidifying units, there's heat. We have all of these types of things inside. And then there's the outdoor where we have our hoop houses. That's where we're basically contending with mother nature and what she wants us, what she provides is what we have to grow with. And our new hoop houses that we have going up this summer are gonna be beautiful for what we want them to be. They're gonna allow ample amounts of sunlight to reach our plants, but they're also gonna be able to open up and allow perfect amounts of ventilation to keep the amount of high humidity, low ventilation that would breed bad pests for us. And with that ventilation, we also will be lessening the available habitat for pests such as aphids and mites, because with high winds, they'll get, they don't really wanna be on that plant anymore. I can't speak to what other farms do, but here at MFNY, we actually have certificate of analysis attached to each one of our cultivars that you can actually scan the QR code and it will take you to the page that will give you all of the breakdown of the analysis of our plants here at MFNY and what you can expect to attain out of them. On there, there is also a pesticides list where you can go through and you'll be able to note anything that has been tested for and the availability of it or the, the lack thereof that inside of the uh, product. And that is available to every consumer with the QR code that's on each cultivar. Not only is natural pest control very important for flat and our pre but it's even more important for concentrates because exactly like that name says, it's concentrated. And if we're using pesticides and things like that on our flowers, on our plants, when we're getting the concentrated THC out of it, you're also gonna be getting any concentrated things that are used on that plant as well. Anything that's growing with the plant will be produced inside the flower. And for concentrates, it is of the utmost importance to keep the plant as pristinely healthy as possible with the least amount of additives for them. When I was working at the zoo, I did five years in the education and events programs. So we did a lot of on hand like presentation of animals. So I'm kind of, I like being in front of the camera a little bit. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with us in Greenhouse 3 during our MFAQ session. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more educational information and cool stuff that goes on behind the scenes here at MFNY. Oh.